today we're talking about my employee has hit their full capacity. Now what? What really sprung this podcast today is I was having a conversation with a client that we placed a client service coordinator position, oh, about 12 months. Yeah, we're coming up on 12 months because we're going to do her annual review and map out her growth map. And the attorney called me and said, hey, before we hop on this, where she's going to do her self-evaluation, I'm going to do my evaluation, then we'll scan it over to you, and then we'll uh, craft, you'll facilitate crafting her growth map. She said, here's the deal. You know, I'm realizing that she's never going to be much more than a client service coordinator. The clients love her. I get amazing compliments from the clients, referral sources um, about her on the phone, in person. And the clients just absolutely love her. She does a phenomenal job on the phone and just making certain that uh, the calendar is stacked properly, the follow-up, our reporting that we get every Monday and our um, weekly stakeholders meeting is beautiful. It's accurate. And she's on top of everything to do with clients. However, I don't think she's going to be much more than that. And I said, okay, well, say more about that. Tell me why you believe that. And the attorney proceeds to tell me how she has her drafting deeds, um, sending out legal letters, um, printing and assembling trusts, that she has her doing some probate, um, doing asset tables and getting um, a lot of the asset alignment completed. And that's where it's like time out. So she's so phenomenal at client services that you decided to turn her into a legal secretary or a legal assistant, law clerk, whatever terminology resonates with you. And she's not able to keep up. She's not able. I said, so what tells you that she's never going to be able to be more than that? She's like, well, I know that she's making mistakes. And that's where I said, you got to stop and time out right now. Because, of course, she's going to be making mistakes. The average phone call coming in from an intake process is 19 minutes with processing and setting up the files and making certain that all the information and the data and the fields are accurate in your CRM. That year, it's about 21 minutes per call. So, in essence, your client service coordinator is your sales force. If they don't do a great job, your job's irrelevant as the attorney because you have nobody to meet with in the conference room. You have nobody on your calendar if they're doing a crap-ass job of treating clients and servicing clients and communicating safety and compassion and empathy and all that and getting them to take the next right move. So often, attorneys will have team members that are doing a great job that they're like, oh, let me just give them this. Let me just give them this. Let me just give them this especially because they're paralegal quit, which mind you, they're paralegal quit because they're also doing billing. They were also, when I really started dissecting that and having to uh, replace for the client service coordinator or for the paralegal, I'm like, you have a paralegal where they could be do billable hour work with um, certain matters where are not flat fee and you have them doing bookkeeping and billing which you can outsource that for 20 bucks an hour. That just really does not make a great business sense. So, so often when you see your team members, especially in the receptionist slash client services position, so often people will just say, well, they're never going to be much more than that. And I really want to push back and invite you all to re-look at that because they're phenomenal with the clients. And I don't know, you're paying them 40, 45,000, even 50,000. Hell, I don't care if it's a hundred thousand dollars that you're paying a client service coordinator. And all they're doing is making clients feel so safe, acknowledged and heard. They're making sure your calendar is beautifully stocked with a healthy balance between prospective clients and paying clients. They're making certain that your workflow and the life cycle of a file is moving forward and managed beautifully. So in my opinion, that's a $100,000 job. If they're able to master that, then you can start talking about how about a client connect campaign? 
How about do, running some reports and doing follow up and nurture campaigns for our clients? Then it's really a two hundred thousand dollar a year job. Like this mindset around that our, my employee has hit their ceiling, or I'm seeing that they're only capable if they're able to manage the phone, the client experience, the calendar, and your CRM and your file management. I can't tell you how many phone calls we get a day, emails we get a day, texts we get, a carrier pigeon of notices of just furious attorneys and support team alike that why is it so hard for somebody to be able to manage the phone, the client experience in the calendar? Well, I'll tell you because 30 years ago, that's what I did. And it's no joke trying to manage an attorney's calendar, even when you don't have opposing counsel in court and all the other things, depositions and mediations and what have you, and so many different players and helpers involved in the matter. It is a lot to be able to manage that and to keep up, especially in the personal service industry. And especially when most phone calls, when people call an attorney, it is 100% of the time, emotionally charged phone call. Now, I'm not saying that they're upset, but it it was an emotional experience that drove them to pick up the phone and to contact an attorney as a solutions and issue spotter and being a counselor. So do not negate and do not diminish the value in that position. And thinking that they're never going to be much more than that in any position, quite honestly, but by and large in the client services position, when you give them, when they're able to master that, that's a sales position, like it or lump it, call it what you will, client services, director of first impressions, receptionist, legal secretary, secretary, whatever term resonates with you. That is 100% a sales position. It is 100% about calming people down, making them feel safe, acknowledged, and heard, and the getting them and inspire them and empowering them to make the next right move. Then from there, it's making certain they stay on the bus and stay on the journey to not cancel their appointments, not to reschedule them, and to stay on the course to be from a place of hiring you, delivering their documents, and then ultimately moving them to an annual or a monthly maintenance program where, you know, that's one way where I'm like, time out, do not have this person touching the inside guts of a file. They're doing such an amazing job with the client experience. Why wouldn't you optimize that? Why wouldn't you leverage that? And how in the world do you not see value in that? Their value is so much, much more than the paralegals or the attorneys, in all honesty, because they're the starting part of the process. They're your branding. So when it comes to a place that my attorney's never going to, or my my employee is never going to be much more than X, you have to really get clear on the value that they're creating and communicating to them the value that they're creating for you. And we hear this often with bookkeepers or paralegals or what have you. We're growing the practice and we want to have, and I can't get my paralegal to do dot, dot, dot. Well, let's really do some silly math here and look at what they are doing for you right now and the value that they are creating. And how about we leave them in their own silo. How about we leave them alone and let them just multiply and leverage what they're already doing instead of dumping more stuff on top of them? I had this call with an attorney today. They're like, well, I'm getting a little nervous. I have this um, independent contract attorney. She's phenomenal. She's good. She's doing a great job. She doesn't really love drafting. Not her gig. She does it though. Um, She's fantastic in the client meetings, a client's lover. She is such an eagle eye for reviewing documents, which I hate. And she's doing an extraordinary job with the review meetings. 
I'm like, okay, well, what's the value if you sit down and have an empowering conversation with her and talk about a team approach in regards to what she likes to do and saying, okay, great. We even did the math and, and I'm like, all right, she's part-time. She only has these days available. She th- has like 16 hours in the middle of moving across the country, building a home, has children with the pandemic, uh, you know, school, homeschooling, yada, yada, yada. Like, why don't we get people in their genius zone? Why don't we have them anchoring to their unique ability? Right now she's drafting trust, can't stand it, but doing it. How about versus you having this underbelly fear that she's going to leave, you actually spearhead it and you really get to the root of it and get her working within her unique ability. And letting her do the things that she likes to do. And oh, by the way, she can probably do it in less time than she's doing now. So she can have that work-life balance. Otherwise, let's just bury her head in the sand and ignore it. And then she comes in and says she can't handle everything and leave when you already have this inkling that that might be coming. And just really anchor into her perceived value. And let's really start stacking the value there and then speaking into it and getting everybody within their unique ability. So what if she's never going to be more than a 1099 contract attorney that is taking over reviewing documents will outsource the drafting? She's also handling all the design meetings for you. And we could, we came up with a real quick system of her doing a loom debrief, getting it over to client services, client services gets it to the outsource drafting. Then she rewatches the video for review. So nothing's missed. We came up with the checklist in regards to the reviews, and then she's handling the signing. And in fact, let's have the outsource paralegal do a 15 minute pre-signing, making certain we have names, birth date, you know, dates of birth, all that down. And then we move the signing meeting from an hour, sometimes 90 minutes down to 30. Like, hello, it's, it's, you have to really get clear on what your value is in each employee. Like I said, for me, a killer client service coordinator, i.e. Salesforce, i.e. director of first impression, i.e. an extension of your marketing team, And they're doing a bang up job on the client experience, managing the file, the CRM, the reporting, the KPIs, the follow up. That's worth $200,000 a year for me. And so you're all frustrated that she can't handle it. She's never going to be more than that. Where is the value in that? I mean, it just, we got to stop with making things so complex. And when things are very complex, You know, the complexity is the enemy of profitability. The more complex, the more broken, broke you will stay. And the more simple, the more profitable you are. So why not take what's working and leverage it and optimize it versus saying that, oh, this is all this person's going to be versus this is your genius zone. This is your unique ability. And every time I come to you and try to make you become a legal assistant or try to make you become a drafter or whatever, just because we're having a freak out moment because we're busy or we have a freak out moment because somebody quit or we have a freak out moment because we have this inkling that people are not really carrying their weight, what have you just stop. And anchor to the value proposition, go back to the value ladder and get really, really clear on that, you know, and really anchoring into the human being, not the human doing. And I cannot say enough about that. Get clear on what your value is. Stay in your own lane, put your head down, focus on your goals and stop listening to, you know, all these different stories on the listserv and what have you about, you know, value proposition and what your paralegal should be. I cannot, when I, people send me these job descriptions, I'm like, you're insane. Even if the person is super woman, why would you want to split someone into what we see the average of 3.5 jobs versus allowing them to be the best concierge, the best cruise director, the best client service coordinator and up-level it and optimize it and finding out what specifically they're doing and leverage it, optimize it, automate it, up-level it. 
and do it over and over and over again. So stop worrying about that people will never be more than X and get really clear on what that X is and the value of that X to you, to your business, to your bottom line, for the client experience, and focus on that. And is that more enough, more than enough? Heck yeah. With that contract attorney, oh my goodness, absolutely. Because guess what, attorney? You're going back to drafting trusts or reviewing trusts or doing design meetings. And when we did the math, we're like, with this new little system and having this conversation and people being in their genius zone, you just freed up at least 12 hours of your time. What are you doing with that 12 hours now? How about you do the videos? How about you do the podcast? How about you do the webinar? How about you review the blogs, the things that you can't get to and start working on the business versus in the business. Start working on these optimizers and these these activities that are going to bring in more of your avatar ideal client. And the same thing with the client service coordinator. You know, and the attorneys, him and and Han, him and Han, well... I don't know if I want, I want to give her a raise and I'm like, okay, great. What's this position worth to you? What have you? We do the math. It comes out to like $175,000 a year and she's just in a full blown sweat about giving her a $2 an hour raise. I'm like, did the 20 minutes that we just spent on this conversation, how much time did you just lose at your billable hour? This is insanity. So stop measuring from this place of delusion, if you will, and really anchoring into the value and what you value. You value your freedom. You value your flexibility. You value that, you know, most of us, we would hate to be, you know, we would hate to be the employee and be our, have us as our boss, right? We know, we know the stories in our head. I, we've talked about exhaustion and exhausting. But simple is better. And the best messaging, the best training, the best onboarding is not loaded with obstacles. So keep it simple. Get really clear on the value of each position. This client service coordinator in my book, when I look at their P&Ls and I look at their calendar, it's worth $200,000. Now are you going to pay client service coordinator $200,000? No, but are you going to pay them what they're worth and then have an incentive-based compensation at this point when you're realizing that they're not going to be much more than this and figuring out how you can take what they are doing just splendidly and optimizing that and up-leveling it? Yeah. And do you want to create an incentive-based compensation plan or a bonus structure around it? Hell yes. So let us know if we can help you with figuring out your simple, silly math. And we can help you solve this problem, get really, really, really clear on the value and creating a strengths-based business versus this lack of that they're never going to be more than X. I can't get them to do more than X, but let's focus on what they are doing and finding a way to leverage it optimize it and keep them protected in their own unique ability in their own genius zone let us know how you make out with this